Hello, I'm teacher Ivan from Wuna Educational Services. I will come you to this particular lesson uh, where we are looking at particularly volume. We shall be studying volume in two details. To start with is that um, volume is a derived quantity which is derived from length. Therefore, volume is defined as uh, the amount of space occupied by any object and it is measured in meters cubed. However, apart from meters cubed, we have other units of volume such as kilometer cubed, hectometer cubed, decameter cubed, decimeter cubed, centimeter cubed, millimeter cubed, among others. Then, how do we get volume of different objects? We shall start with the, the regular shaped objects. When we talk about volume of regular shaped objects, we shall majorly consider the three-dimensional figures. Volume of a tubeoid, volume of a tube, volume of... Uh, a rectangular block that is a tuboid actually, volume of a trapezoid, volume of a pyramid, volume of a cylindrical object, volume of a pyramid, and so on. Now, volume of regular shaped objects is obtained using a suitable formula. So if you want to know more about the formulas of uh, volume for different shapes, please, I direct you to our sister channel, that is Wuna e-learning platform. You scroll down, you will find it. Go to all level physics, go to measurements, search for a lesson on volume. You will satisfy yourself with the volume of regular objects. Then. We also have volume of the irregular objects, such as a stone. However, irregular objects are divided or categorized into two. We have irregular sinking object and irregular floating objects. For instance, a stone sinks. So, for irregular sinking objects, the volume is obtained by two methods. One is displacement method, where we pour water in a cylinder, note its initial volume, and immerse carefully the stone and note the new volume. Then we get the volume of the stone by simply subtracting the initial volume from the new volume. That is displacement method. Then we also have what we call the Eureka can method, where water is poured into the Eureka can until it reaches the spout or even it flows through the spout. Then once water stops flowing through the spout, we now bring our measuring cylinder we put it under the spout and immerse the stone. When we immerse the stone, the water level will tend to rise. As it rises, water will flow out through the spout. Then we just simply get the volume of the water in the measuring cylinder. That will be equivalent to the volume of the stone. That's what we call the Eureka Khan method. However, that is for a, an irregular sinking object. What if we have irregular floating object, like a, a piece of wood, majorly a dry wood? How should we get its volume? Since it floats on water, we shall have to use what we call a sinker. A sinker can be a piece of stone, it can be a piece of metal, 
So this is how we did. We shall do the same way we've done for the stone, or we can use either displacement method or Eureka can method. But in this particular method, we have a sinker tied on a floating object in order to make it sink. And therefore, we shall get from the method of displacement, we shall get three volumes. One, we shall note the initial volume of the water in the measuring cylinder. Then immerse the sinker alone. And note the volume. We now tie the sinker onto the dry wood and immerse them together and note the new volume. So the, the volume of the floating object will now be the volume of both the sinker and the floating object take away the volume of the, the sinker alone. That will give us the volume of the floating object. So that has been a video on volume. Maybe the other one could be getting volume of air. How do we get volume of air? Volume of air is gotten simply by replacing air with a liquid. For instance, if I have my density bottle, I'll leave it clean and open, meaning it is full of air. But if I want to get the volume of air in this density bottle, I'll simply refill it with water and get the volume of that water. But this, the, the science be behind that is that as I'm filling this density bottle with water, water is replacing air and therefore it takes equal volume as that of air that is being displaced. And therefore the density of the, sorry, the volume of the water is equivalent to the volume of the air displaced. So that's how we get volume of the air. Volume of liquids is simply got by using a measuring cylinder, whereby you pour that liquid in a measuring cylinder, which is calibrated, and note the reading. That is simple. Otherwise, I'm teacher Ivan from Wuna Educational Services, please. I request you to subscribe to all our YouTube channels. Just scroll down on the home page. You will see them. Subscribe to them so that you enjoy learning and we work together through your academic journey. Bye-bye. See you next time.